Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my SQLite video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install SQLite both on a Mac as well as Windows, and I'm also going to show you a ton of different ways to use it. Now, if you have been watching my Android tutorial, don't freak out. The SQLite tutorial is part of the Android tutorial, and I am going to be using SQLite to a great extent in the Android tutorial, and that is the reason why I'm covering it. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. So what exactly is SQLite? Well, in essence, SQLite is an embedded relational database. And what makes it cool is that it doesn't require a dedicated database management system to use. The database is literally part of your code, and it is not an outside resource like you may be used to. So you might say, well, what is the purpose for using SQLite? Well, the reason it was created was to provide a self-contained database that was both easy to use, could travel with the program using it, and also it's great because it runs on pretty much any machine with no required software. So how does SQLite stand up in regards to performance? Well, for small to medium sized applications, which since we're making Android applications right now, they are a prime perfect type of application to use SQLite with, SQLite actually has been found to be superior to most other databases, even in regards to speed. Once again, for small to medium sized applications. It does, however, underperform if you manage multiple connections, or if it is asked to perform really complicated queries. And to a certain extent with Android, that's going to occur because the device is much slower than a desktop. So you may ask, what languages does it work with? Well, pretty much every single language. Even though SQLite was written with C, there are literally numerous extensions that make it usable with other languages. And in most situations, there's numerous extensions for even individual languages. So if you want to use SQLite, you're pretty much going to be able to use it with any language. And for the most part, the really cool thing is these extensions are going to follow a similar pattern. So for example, they are each going to provide a connection object that represents a connection to the database. They're also going to provide a cursor object that represents an SQL query. And of course, that object's going to allow you to do such things as execute commands and also iterate over your results. So now let's jump into how to install SQLite. Well, the very first thing I'm going to do here is show you how to install SQLite on a Macintosh system. Now, what I like to use is something called Mac Ports. And if you haven't used Mac Ports, it is going to save you an insane amount of time. Basically, to install it, you're just going to go to macports.org forward slash install.php. And then you just want to come down inside of here until you get to this part where it says Mac OS X Package Installer. This is, of course, the easiest way to install. However, you're going to have to install a different version of Mac Ports depending upon the version of OS X that you are using. Now, the way to find out which version you're using is to go up this little apple and click on it. Click on About This Mac. Then on your screen, you're going to see Mac OS X 10.7.5. So what exactly does that mean? Well, that means depending upon the version number, you're either going to have Leopard if it's 10.5 or if it's 0.6 Snow Leopard, 0.7 Lion, or 0.8 Mountain Lion. So it's just that easy to figure out which version of Mac ports to install. So I personally have Lion, so I'm just going to click on that. And then Mac ports is going to install down here. Now I already have it installed. So then what we're going to do is you're going to go through the whole process of installing everything. Then come into Terminal inside of here. And after you install Mac ports, you want to make sure that you go sudo port dash v self update like that. If you can't see it, there it is, sudo port dash v self update. And then just hit enter and you're going to have to enter your password, of course, and everything is going to update. And you can see there is everything updating. It's wonderful. And there we go. And what this is going to allow us to do is really easily install SQLite. And there we go, we're all installed, so I'm going to clear my scroll back, and here we are. Now, how hard is it to install SQLite now? You're just going to type in sudo port install SQLite 3. That's it. That's all you need to type in, and then hit enter, and the world will be wonderful, and everything will be installed. So you may ask yourself, well, where exactly is it installed? Right here under users, and then my name's Derek Banis, and it is going to be installed right inside of here. And all your databases and all your different files, and as you're going to see here in a couple minutes, I'm going to actually create a folder that is going to hold all of my databases and so forth and so on. So now we'll jump into how to install it on Windows. Well, you're just going to go into sqlite.org. 
click on download scroll down through here until you get to pre-compiled binaries for Windows this is the guy you're gonna want and just click on where it says SQL Lite shell da 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 and of course open it up and there you can see SQL Lite is installed right there now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get this guy and cut it jump into computer here my computer or my part of Windows is called boot camp jump into Windows and then finally jump into system 32 and then just paste it inside of here now the reason I did that is because I have this path set up for Windows System 32. So I'm just going to go in here, click on Programs, Accessories, and then I'm going to go into Command Prompt. And here I am inside of the DOS prompt or the Command Prompt, and I can type in SQL Lite 3. And you can see SQL Lite opened right up inside of there. Now everything I do from the rest of the tutorial is going to work on Windows and Macs, but I'm used to using a Mac, so I am going to use a Macintosh from now on. So here I am back in the wonderful world of Max. Now if you want to create a new database, all you're going to have to do is type in SQLite 3. And I'm just going to call the first database we're going to create Test Database. And what this does is it's going to both open up SQLite as well as provide a database name. Now if I want to start off here by creating a table, you just type in Create Table. And let's say I want to call it Employees and I want to have an ID and I want it to be an integer ID and since I want this to automatically generate values that start at one and then increase by one all on its own I'm gonna call this a primary key and then I'm also going to have a text value inside of it that is going to be called name and that is how easy it is to create a table so now let's go in here and actually populate this table with employees how you do that is insert into employees and then you can do this in a couple different ways. I'm going to show you one way and then show you the other way. Then we're going to say what the names are for the parts in the database that we want to assign values. So then you just type in values and then I want to set my ID for this employee and let's say I want to call him Max Eisenhard. Well, there we go. And he's been inserted in there. Now, to save myself a little bit of time, actually, there's no point in doing it this early. Now I'm going to show you the other way to install or enter a value. Now, since this is a primary key, what this is going to allow me to do is just automatically go in there for me and add one to this value to make this two, as you're going to see in a second. So if I just want to enter in my name, I can just type in values. And then inside of this one, let's say I want to go Pietro... Maximoff. And there we go. And that's also going to work. Now if I want to come in here and shorten this up, I can just press up and then come in here and enter another employee. And this time I'm going to call this person Wanda Maximoff. And then my next employee is Mortimer Toynbee. And then the final employee that I'm going to put inside of here is going to be Jason Wingard. And there we are. So we entered in a whole bunch of different employees inside of the table inside of our database. Now I'm going to clear back my scroll back and start showing you how to output this information. So I'm going to set this mode as column. And in column mode, what this is going to do is each record is going to be shown on a separate line with the data aligned in columns. So, you know, pretty simple. And then let's say that I also want to show headers for all the columns so I'm going to set that for on and then if I want to show all my employees I'm just going to say select star which is all of them employees and there you go you can see all of them printed out there on the screen but you can also see here that the names didn't print out the whole way we're going to fix that here in a second all I'm going to do if I want to change that is go with and then I can define the width of my first column. Let's just say it's 15. And then let's set the width for my second column to 20. And you don't have to put a semicolon there, or actually don't do it. And now you're going to see if I go select star from employees, that now you can see the whole entire name. So that's pretty useful. Clear scroll back. And if you want to exit out of SQLite, you just type in a dot and exit. And there you go. Now you're out of there. And then, of course, if you want to reopen your database, just going to type in exactly what we typed in before. And there you can see we're back inside of there. If you want to display the tables in your database, you're just going to type in dot tables. And there you can see employees popped up. And then also, there's a whole bunch of different modes, which I'm going to show you. Let's say that you wanted all of the information to be printed out on its own line. We're just going to set it to mode line. And then select star from employees. And there you can see all of them printed out on their own line. 
if you want to see all of the statements that were used actually let's clear the scroll back here if you want to see all of the statements that were used to create the database you just type in schema and there you can see there's only one or if you want to see just the statements that were used to create employees type in schema employees and it shows you the same thing but if there were multiple tables it would show you individual ones you could also come in here and set mode back to column and headers to on and if you wanted to get a more detailed look at your database you could type in select and you could go type name tbl underscore name sql from sql light master and I have all of the stuff that I'm typing here in a link in the description underneath the video so you can use that as a cheat sheet and there you can see a whole bunch more information popped up there for us to look at and if you want to show the current settings type in show there we are and you can also see all the different things here that I've been changing and I'll go through here and explain like null value let's say that null instead of being an empty space you wanted null value to actually be the word null no problem just go null value dot null and then of course show again and now you can see that changed. If you wanted to change the prompt for SQLite since we're using SQLite 3 you could come in here and go prompt dot SQLite 3 put a space boink and you can see it already worked and if you would like to output your database on the screen you could go dump and dump can be used for a couple different things and there you can see that's how we built the whole entire thing and if you'd like to output to a file which is really cool what we're going to do is go output, change our output source, and I'm going to change it to documents. And everything's going to be based off of this guy right here. So remember, and you can actually see test DB, there's your database that was created. So if I want to come in here and actually create a new folder that's going to hold all of my database information, I'm going to go in here to documents in this situation. And I created a new folder called SQLite 3 files. Now, of course, it's going to be slightly different with a Windows machine. So I'm just going to go dot forward slash documents, SQLite 3 files. Then I can go employees dot SQL. And then I can go dump to output to that file. And then if I want to change my output back to my screen, instead of outputting to a file, I'm just going to go output standard out. Now if we bounce over into SQLite 3 files, you're going to see employees.sql. And if I want to open this with a text editor, for example, just go text edit. And you can see that all the same exact things that previously printed out are now printed out to this file. So that's pretty cool. Now one thing that's kind of weird with SQLite is you don't delete a database with a command. You delete tables, as you're going to see here in a second with commands, but not databases. So that means that what you're going to have to do if you want to delete a database is right here again just go test database and you're going to drag it down here and delete it. Now why I did that is I'm going to show you now how to recreate it from the SQLite file that I just created right here. And if you want to delete a table you just go drop table employees but I got a little bit ahead of myself yeah see it gave me an error because I already deleted the database but if I just wanted to delete a table that's exactly how you would do it now that if I want to come in here and actually read back in the database information that I deleted I'm gonna jump out of SQLite type in SQLite 3 test DB to recreate it and there you can see where I am and then I'm gonna type in dot read dot documents which is where I have it stored yours is probably going to be different SQLite three files forward slash employees dot sql and there we go repopulated that database with that information that was saved and then of course if i come in here and go select everything from employees here is all the information again so now let's take a little bit closer look at mode and all the different things that it's capable of doing because it's pretty cool one of the options for mode is of course to use columns as well as comma separated values you could also come in here and type in mode.html and that's going to print out an html table which is kind of useful insert is going to show all of the insert commands that are used to create the table and you can see if i do this and then go select dot from employees there is the insert if you set insert for mode if you wanted to actually show a list without commas you would just type in dot mode this is something you can play with on your own list that's another option and then finally if you wanted to do tabs there's how you would do that as well 
and I'm sure you know how that works. Now if you wanted to output all of this information as a comma separated value list to a file, you could actually do this in a couple different ways. You could type in mode.csv. You could also type in dot separator like that and then put in a comma and then output all of the information as I've been showing you before. But I actually prefer to just go dot mode CSV. The separator, by the way, would change the way that information is being output. And then let's say that I want to output it to a brand new file, this comma separated value list. I'm going to go output dot forward slash documents SQL light three files employees dot CSV. And then you're going to type in select star from employees. And then don't forget to set your output to standard out. Now if you do that, there you go. You see employees.csv. And then we can bounce over here, go text edit. And there you can see all the names printed out as a CSV file. Also pretty cool. And just in case, what the heck, I have a little bit of time here. Let's just go and show you what it looks like if you output the information as an HTML file. There we go. There you go, there's a table. And if you decide that you would like to output it on separate lines with just the column names and values, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different options. You just go mode line, da da da, and there they are. And then finally, you go mode TCL. And this is kind of a funky one. What this is going to do is, well, I might as well just show you. There you go. It's going to print out all the information using double quotes. And of course, make sure you go output standard out. So there is a whole bunch of different ways to use SQLite. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to go through all of the SQL behind SQLite. And then after I'm done with all that, I'm going to show you how to use SQLite inside of Android. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.